The advice and opinions expressed by the hosts of Autism Live and her guests are meant solely as suggestion and should not be in any way construed as child-specific advice. Any choices you make in determining your child's treatment are completely at your own discretion. Welcome to Autism Live during April. Uh, it's very exciting to be here with you guys. And if you looked at the schedule, you know we've got a big guest on the show today that you're just going to love. He's just one of my favorite people. I'm talking about Kobe Bird. He's going to be joining us in just a few minutes here in the studio. Uh, I do have the, the horrible and terrible news that we are uh, airing this, but we pre-recorded this episode just a few days ago. So this is a brand new interview. It's never been aired before, uh, but it is not live during the time that you are seeing it. I want you to know that because I know that many of you are going to write in and want to talk to Kobe, and I hope that you will because he will have the ability to see all of the comments that you guys wrote in later on, as will I. Uh, but neither of us were able to be here on this day, so we did pre-record it. And uh, I, I, but I know you're going to love it all the same. So uh, we're going to bring him in in just a couple of minutes. But before that, as we do in every show, we just want to welcome you. I'm so glad that you're here. Uh, we want you to know that we are airing this for the first time on Facebook, YouTube, Twitter, and anywhere in the world for the first time right now. And you do have the ability to write in to ask questions. Uh, and I will make, I personally will make sure that Kobe gets to see everything that you guys write in and say, but we're saying hello to all of you. We hope that you're enjoying the programming already, and let me tell you, we've got some really exciting stuff coming up the rest of this month. If you haven't already checked out our calendar, please do, or we, we're going to be posting it on all of our Facebook sites, uh, and I think, I think it is up on the website now as well so that you can keep track of what's happening. If you, if you watched last year, we did a podcast on and we tried to do everything in the month in 44 hours back to back and it was exhausting and uh, it wasn't conducive to you guys really realistically being able to watch it in that way. So now we just have done almost the exact same thing, but we've spread it out across an entire month and we're giving you the full calendar for the month in advance so you can plan. But uh, the shows air live on the day that you see on the calendar, but then they will immediately podcast and be available as a free download uh, wherever you get your podcasts, including, uh, and I, Chris, I think it was already starting showing them to you, our fabulous Chris Desmond, what would we do without him? But, you know, you can download it, iHeartRadio, Spotify, uh, Apple Podcasts, wherever you get your podcasts. It is a free download for you, and we're in our 14th year of doing that, and I'm super proud of that because it is important to me. Our mission here at the Autism Network with all the shows we do here is to provide information and inspiration. And the asterisk after that is always for me, and I know for Dr. Grampiche, is how can we get that information to you at no cost to you? Because we know that your dollars are spread in different places. And uh, so we do provide that to you at no cost. It does mean that there are advertisers, and we hope that you embrace that because it's what's making it free for you. Uh, especially in podcasts, there are regular advertisements that you will hear, and we hope that you will appreciate that they are there for that reason. If you really don't want to listen to the podcast with advertisements, we have partnered with Glow. So you can go to Glow, G-L-O-W dot F-M slash Autism Live. When you go there, it will, they will ask you to pay a small fee, which is $5 a month. That's if you're going to do it month to month. Um, and there'll just be a regular day that they'll take $5 out of your account when you sign up, or you can pay for it at a year at a time, and there's a big discount if you do that. So uh, if you want to get the podcast uh, ad-free, you can absolutely do that. I do want you to know that when you do that, you get everything that the Autism Network does. That includes Autism Live. That inc includes Ask Dr. Doreen. You get all of those uh, without advertisement when you when you go glow.fm slash autism live so hope that you will do that I always uh, like to remind you guys that um, we we do a lot on this show that is uh, as I said about 
information and inspiration. Uh, but part of why we're here is to create a community of people that can hold hands. We like to say, si se puede, here that we hold hands and we get through a whole bunch of things together. And I, our entire show is meant for that larger autism community which starts with individuals who are themselves on the spectrum. But then it also includes everyone who loves those individuals. I think today's show is a perfect example of that that I identify as a proud pony. I'm a parent of a neurodiverse individual. I myself am not neurodivergent or neurodiverse, um, but we have a wonderful guest who is on the show today and someone that I love that identifies as, uh, well, you, you'll let him, we'll let him tell you what he identifies as, because uh, I love that the most. But anyway, I think together, when we pair up together, with people who are uh, identify as being diverse, divergent, on the spectrum, whatever words they like to use, I think the world is a better place. So I'm always trying to see how can I be a good ally, how, how can I sit in the front row, how can I listen, how can I be a, a better ally. I hope you join me in that, in this amazing month of A's, autism awareness, autism acceptance, autism appreciation, autism action, right? Uh, I'm, I'm adding A words whenever I can. It's April, it's the A word month. Uh, anyway, we like to start with jargon and apparently this is one that we have never done before on the show. I almost didn't believe that, and then, uh, but I, we can't find it if we've done it before. So uh, if you watch the show, you know, we give you one word, one phrase, one acronym, we try to give you an actual definition that's usually from a book or a website. And when appropriate, I make fun of the actual definition and how many more jargon terms it adds into <laughs> our consideration. And then we give you our working definition, which hopefully helps you to be able to embrace what this word means to you right now, today, and how can it help you. So today's jargon term is proprioception. Uh, doesn't it sound like the name of a, a, a movie that is about blowing buildings up? No, it's not about that. Let's take a look at what our actual jargon is and see if we can't make heads or tails of this. Okay, proprioception, also called proprioceptive sense. Proprioception is the sense, well that makes sense, of body movement and position. The sense comes from stimulation of the proprioceptors in the muscle, tendons, and joints in the skeleton muscular system, and also the vestibular receptors in the inner, inner ear. Even without visual clues, proprioception enables the body to determine its spatial orientation. Thank you very much, psychologydictionary.org, and this is why we do this on the show. And look, it's a great definition, I'm not sure who for, because if you're not already an expert in proprioception and vestibular uh, reception, receptors, I don't know if this is all that helpful to anybody. But it's a starting place. So let's continue on to our working definition and see if we can't make heads or tails of this. Proprioception is having an awareness of where your body is and what it's doing without having to see it with your eyes. Okay, so let's talk about this for a minute. Have you ever had the experience where you're sitting someplace but you doze off for a second and you kind of divorce yourself from this realm and you wake up and there's this sharp coming back and you kind of jolt because you realize I'm in a chair. I don't know who I was for a second. I was asleep for a second. And, you, and you're like, oh my gosh, where am I in space? Or you don't know where you are as you're coming back awake. So your proprioception is helping you to know what's happening. So that um, the other day I was in a restaurant and I was, uh, obviously the table is there and my foot was below the table and I, I have a sense of, because of proprioception, I have a sense of where my foot is, right? But I, and I realized I thought I was putting my foot on the, the bottom of a table, right? Because it felt like that's what it was, but about three seconds later that moved. And I immediately wanted to look and see under the table. And what I had done is stuck my foot on the person that I was having lunch with on top of their foot, uh, right? 
but because I couldn't see it, and my sense was that it was resting on something that was hard, and then that was challenged for me, right? The, I think the best thing to think about with a kiddo on the autism spectrum is that when you're trying to teach them to ride a bike, right? And so often, an individual on the autism spectrum, when they go to ride a bike, they want to look down to see what their feet are doing to pedal, right? So, and what we want is that proprioception to kick in enough so that they are spatially aware and as they're pedaling and moving their feet on the pedals, they don't need to look down anymore. I would tell you, uh, everybody has a different amount of proprioception that they have. It's very individual. I, uh, and, and we talk about people having high proprioception, that people are so aware of where they are in space and time, and this can be a very good thing, or it can be something that adds a lot of pressure to somebody. But then there are those of us, and I count myself in this category, who have a low proprioception. Um, that I am not a good keyboardist because I need to see uh, where my fingers are. I can't look at the screen and type at the same time because I lose track of where my hands are in space and time. Um, and there are many other examples of this. We can work on this and we can build this. A lot of times an OT will work on this um, to build that sense of, uh, of where they are in space and time. For people who aren't, who have maybe low proprioception, like myself, we tend to be fidgeters that we, uh, I, you notice, and I watch during this interview, I will cross my legs a million times and my hands are moving and whatever, because otherwise I lose track of where my limbs are in space. I literally, I'm like, ah, and then I get dizzy, right? If I don't know where I am in space, um, and that's just me. And there are people who are on the autism spectrum that need, you know, pressure, that we teach them how to be able to squeeze themselves so that they know where they are in space. It's a, it can, you know, if you're in a, a tank, a sensory deprivation tank, losing track of where you are in space and time can feel like a relief. But if you're not in a tank, it can be a very disturbing feeling and can raise your anxiety when you're not sure where you are in space and time. I guess maybe a good example of it is, you know how when you, you get a new car and you need to get a sense of where... You know, you're looking out over the hood of the car and where your parameters are or, or when you're backing up where the parameters are. And it takes a minute because you have to get a sense of the car. Uh, imagine if it were like that with your body, that you don't have a sense of, of how, you know, how far and how much force do you need to be able to do to pick up the thing and do you have to watch as you're picking up the thing. I am somebody who tends to miss. I am queen of the going to the grocery store, and I look at the thing I want on the shelf, and then I'm looking over there, and I reach up and put it in the thing, and I get home, and I did not pick up the right thing. What can I tell you? Uh, but imagine what that's like for a person who's on the autism spectrum and how that might create a problem for them with anxiety or just movement. What we see, it's interesting, that sometimes dancers have a very high sense of proprioception, that they know exactly where their hand is in space and what that it's doing, right? But then you have the exact opposite. Sometimes there are dancers that they started dancing to help them to build that sense. So proprioception, it's a very important thing to take into consideration when we're teaching somebody, when we're helping them to learn the things that they want to do. Because it, it's even hard to get somebody to sit in a chair if they're struggling with proprioception. Watch me fidget during this hour. Uh, we see with some of our kiddos, an OT will say, let's give them a ball to balance on because it constantly, the ball constantly sends feedback to the body which helps their brain to key into what their body is doing. It's kind of brilliant. There it is, proprioception. All right, my friends, we're going to take just a brief second here to bring in Kobe Bird, and we are going to be back. Kobe Bird, if you don't know, brilliant young actor. Um, he first, uh, his, so many credits, but one of the first things we saw him on television, we saw him on Speechless, then we saw him on The Good Doctor, then, of course, we loved and watched him on uh, Lock and Key as he played Rufus. 
this is a young man with a brilliant career in front of him. You may not know, but he is also uh, an artist in many different ways. Uh, we're going to talk with him about the painting that he did for us. And he is a brilliant international speaker. Oh, my gosh, such a good speaker. And today's show is really devoted to getting to know Kobe Bird. We're going to talk with him about everything under the sun, all things Kobe. You're going to appreciate this. Stick with us. talking about Mr. Kobe Hello. Bird. <laughs> Good to be back, as always. <laughs> and you are uh, a semi-regular here. I feel like we just keep checking in with you at different points of your life. Um, and I said this the other day when I said, I hadn't seen you in quite a while, and I said, look at you. You just went, and all, went got all grown up. Uh, you're just a fabulous young man now. It's, I, think it's, I think it's been almost 10 years since I first started. I'm 21 now, so... I think I met you when I was 14, so I, I think we're almost, yeah, so I think, I think we're eight years now. It's amazing. Yeah. And, and yeah, you were a teenager when I first met you, and you've been a young man for a while now, but, you know, sometimes it takes those of us who are a little older a little while to catch up. But, but you're amazing, yeah. and we love you. I don't think uh, I can say that enough, but we love you. The last time, if I'm not mistaken, the last time we had you in this studio was at the beginning of April last year. Yeah. Already? That, that was a year ago? Yeah. Yeah, because it was during oh, yeah. the first week in April, and we did our uh, right. crazy podcast a and you were on during the first hour. Do you remember who, who was on with you? Um, yeah. Um, see, see, the, see, the, see, the and faces. I put you on the spot. The, the, faces, the faces on the thumb of my head. You um, probably could tell the credits, but but I'll, yeah. I'll help you out because I don't want you to, to I, bring Dom I know Domitania, um, and Holly Robinson. Was? Holly Robinson, yes. yes. And Dr. Grant Pichet. Right. And it was the first time. I remember, I remember. It was the first time that Dr. Grant Pichet got to spend a significant amount of time with you, because I'm going to tell a secret about the start it of was. the podcast film. But uh, she still talks about you and is like, you know, Kobe said something, and I remember he said this, and, and, and she really, it really impacted her meeting you. Uh, and she brings you up all the time, so that's a pretty amazing thing. Well, she's well, she's an amazing person. And like see, seeing what she's done all these years for for the community, it's it's just it's 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 amazing. It really is. Well, and I'm sure she'll, she'll appreciate uh, hearing you say that. But for those of you, if you haven't, go back and watch that hour of podcast on because you stole the whole thing. You, you know, we had Holly Robinson Pete and Joe Montagna here, and and you stole the whole <laughs> thing. You just started saying stuff and. And Holly yeah, and Joe just turned to you, and they were like, oh, my gosh, this young man. And we were also featuring that day that you made a painting for us. I did, yes. At, that hangs in this studio just to my left here. And we don't – anymore, we don't have a lot of people in the studio, but whenever we do, people come in and go – I love that painting. Who did that painting? And we're so happy to tell them that you did. So you're so multi-talented. But I do want to tell people that we had been planning for literally months for that podcast-a-thon, and it was, you know, just this huge planning thing. We got everybody in here, and to have stars like Kobe Bird and Joe Montaigne and Holly Robbins and Pete and Dr. Grampy Shea, and we had everybody in here, and everybody was lined up, and it was straight up 3 o'clock. We're going to launch this thing. We're going to be on for 44 hours and then all of our systems went uh, and and just died. I think I remember that. Oh, it was just yeah. terrible. And we couldn't that, get yes. on. And we couldn't get on for like 15 minutes. And at that, yeah, that moment, oh yeah, I remember that. That was crazy. It was crazy. I remember like, oh, what's going on? And I and I was so, I was totally fine with it. But it was, it. I was like, I was like, I was like, is, is, is everything going on back there? Like, oh. No, it was. 
It was catastrophic. Yeah, it was fine, but but I but I was like, oh yeah, the, oh yeah, I'm just gonna wait. They, they know what they're doing. I'm just I'm here. You were the consummate yeah. professional, yeah. as you always yeah. are. But we were sweating bullets and losing our minds, and not even sure that we were ever gonna be able to get anything back. Uh, for those of you who watch Love Is Blind, there was supposed to be that live finale a couple of months ago, and they never were able to get it back. Oh, I and I kept sitting there thinking. I, I have a faint idea what the, these people are going through, yeah. but with yeah. millions and billions of dollars you get, you attached, get it. right? Um, so, but we did get back on the air at 15 minutes in, and I think if you go back and watch it, it really isn't evident. Everybody yeah. is just, because you know why? We were all sitting here and, and having such a good time, yeah. and you and Joe and Holly and Dr. Doreen yeah, yeah, we were all just talking. Were chatting, and... I think that th that applies to being on stage, too. You, nobody in the audience knows what is, what is going on behind the, behind the scenes because there's there's so much going on be, behind the stage w within the actual show b b between between all the, between all the performers and actors and everything and there's so there, there's so much you don't know what's going on so so when it's sh so so when it's from the so when it's from from the perspective of somebody who is yeah. in that situation it's it's, it's different totally yeah, it's, different. It's, it's 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 so different. So, and I didn't really even, uh, I went through some of your bio before, but for those of you who are just tuning in, uh, Kobe is a brilliantly talented actor, and we saw that when you were on the first time when you were 14 years old. Um, but you have continued to amaze the oh, world. You. you have blazed trails for so many people. You guys saw him probably first, if you're not in the L.A. area, you saw him first on The Good Doctor. And boy, you tore down so many barriers when you did that. And then, of course, um, you fought. Well, before that, you were on Speechless. Yeah. And that was amazing. We were all like, look, look at that. That's absolutely amazing. Kobe's, uh, you know, on set. And it wasn't real. It really wasn't. I, I really loved every single production that, I, that I've been a part of has been nothing but phenomenal. And, and being around good people like that, like, th that's, that's, why, that's why I love being in this business because, y yeah, 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 you, yeah, you do get all those parts, but then all the good parts are just, they're, they're way more apparent than they are, than, 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 than the negative parts. And that's what I've always looked at. And it's been nothing but good for me. Well, and then, of course, uh, you guys who follow him know you scored a very big role of uh, playing Rufus. Rufus and Lock and Key. Yeah. yeah. And uh, three seasons of that. And... Amazing. I, I, you know, I'd love a reboot. I know it might be a minute early, but I'd love a reboot. Uh, but absolutely <laughs> amazing. And especially the third season of Lock and Key, where you really got to, yeah. you know, stretch out a little bit more in the role. But there's, the, you know, what you do as a professional actor, and that is absolutely amazing. But then there are the ripples that it created in the yeah. autism community that have been absolutely yeah. brilliant. But I, I want to say that I promoted this show, and we've been talking about this show, and said that um, years ago I did a video with Dr. Temple Grandin where I was in the car with her, and I was driving, and we were just talking. And I had said to Dr. Grandin, we're just going to talk about, you know, life and you, and we want to get to know you. I love that. And, yeah. and it was just so much talking. fun. And then this thing happened in October where I happened to be in a car again. There were no cameras, although I wish there had been. And your mom was driving, and I was in the car, and you and Dr. Grandin were in the car. Yes. And you guys struck up a conversation. And I think your mom and I were like, oh, my gosh, this is like the most amazing thing that we've ever been witness to. I remember, though. It, T Temple is such an amazing person. Like, right? The f I, I always knew she was amazing, but like, but, but having to like, but, but like having actually met her and, and like having actually spoken to her, it was such a different experience, and I and, and I loved her even more. And just, just just talking to her about all those things, like she got it on that, she got it on that level. And like having and like having somebody who was so close to me, like in that aspect, like actually being actually being able to have that conversation, it was so amazing just to like experience that, but like being in it and just like. Have somebody who understood all that. And can I tell you, I think it meant the same to her, yeah. Kobe. Yeah. That how often does she right. get to meet peers, which are people who, you know, have different, I mean, it's different for everybody, different challenges for everybody always, but to have people that are working at the highest place in their career yeah. that she can relate to on that level. And we saw that. I mean, your mom and I saw that. And there was something in particular that, um, that happened in the car. And I know I've spoken with her about it on camera. 
I haven't spoken with you about it on camera before, but do you know the conversation that I I'm remember. talking about? Do I, you want to tell them? Because yeah. it's amazing. Yeah, so I, I, I actually was thinking about this yesterday, and I was thinking about, like, what to say, because I this is something that, like, that, that I've been talking about and, th- and thinking about for, for my whole career, and, and this is something that I've always been very driven about. And w- one of the things that me, that me and Temple were talking about um, is what is is what is first your profession or your autism and we and we said um, our profession is, is first because yes our autism is a part of us and it, and it is us but it doesn't define us it, I, I'm not I'm not Kobe the autistic actor I'm Kobe the actor who just so happens to have autism and yeah and yes it's, 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 and you can say autism or, or autistic I, I, that isn't that isn't an issue with me but for me I've all but, but for me when it comes to my career, I, I always put I always put my profession first. I, I, I am I am an actor first and, and foremost, and that and that is who and that is who I will always be. And yes, I do so have an autism, but that doesn't mean that that isn't exactly who I am. That isn't that isn't my that isn't my definition of a human. That I am who I am, and yes, I, I I have autism, but my autism is what makes me me, and it's it's just it's one of the, it's one of the many parts of. Of who I am, but I, but I still am, but, but, but I still, but I still am Kobe. And I, and this was part of what your mom and I, it was, I was so glad your mom was driving because I would have driven right off the road. I would have <laughs> called the press. Like we just have heard the most brilliant conversation to hear you both talking about it in that way. Because obviously we hear a lot of conversations about, you know, identity and, uh, and I know uh, that uh, for all of us, we're always saying, you tell me how you'd like to be yeah. identified, right? I, yeah. I'm okay with however somebody wants to be identified. But to hear both of you say, yeah, but we think it's it's oh, our yeah. career, our profession. And then to think about that and go, well, that's us too. And it made yeah. me think of Joanne Laura, who's no, no longer with us, but she was always saying work, 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 yeah. work. We need to get people on the spectrum working because it gives them a seat at the table and it gives identity. And do you know what she said the first time what did she, say? she saw you do lock and key? Uh, she was like, oh my gosh, he's so good. And he has a job on the show. She was so thrilled that your character a had a job on the show, that that was part of Rufus's identity too. Mm-hmm. That meant the world to her. Yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't always about Rufus and his disability. I don't even think there was even a mention that he had a disability in the show yeah. once. He was just Rufus. Yeah. And yeah, you might have seen, you might have seen something. Not not seen. You might have seen something. <laughs> you might have seen some things here and there, but it was never. But but it was never. Oh, Rufus had. Oh, Rufus yeah. is different. Oh, he's slow. Oh, he's so and so. It's it's never been about that. He was he was just Rufus, the caretaker of of Kiosk, and that that's always what it was. But. And he was valued yeah. as a person mm-hmm. and a working person. Exactly. Which she just loved that, that you were putting that example out. Yeah. And, of course, I was just, you know, blown away by how good you were. You're so good on oh, camera. You. You're so good on camera. But what I started to tell the story is that I wanted to take all this time to talk about Kobe things and get to know Kobe yeah. better. And uh, because some of you may not know, because I, I am lucky enough that I consider you part of my family. We're not just friends at this point. You're part oh, of family. my family. Yeah, family, yeah. Um, but I, a lot of people there may not know a lot of things about you. So I wanted to start by talking about what are things that, when you're not working, that you like to do. I can think of one thing because you, oh, yeah. you bring it with you everywhere, and it's underneath his chair. Uh, oh. <laughs> you tell I'll us. Say no more. Uh, yeah. Um, so... For context, my whole room was full of Legos. Like that, like that, that was my that was my obsession. And as time has gone on, as as I have gotten older, and I have gotten away, I've broken away from Legos. I still love Legos, but not nowhere near as much as I used to. And now my whole entire room is is is, is a whole library of books. Yeah. And so all I, so all I do now is read. But I um um it's it's got it's gotten to where I have so many books in my in my room that I've been considering getting, getting an e-reader because, because I, I was thinking, I was thinking to myself, okay, I'm, okay, I'm going to, okay, I'm going to run out of storage sometime soon. And then I realized, oh, wait, no, I have no storage anywhere in my room because it's gotten to where all of my books are on the wall now. And we've like put, we put up shelves on the wall to put, to, to put all my, to put all my books. Yeah. So, so, so it's gone to where, so it's gone to where I've been considering getting a Kindle and like, and actually, 
using that more. But but at first I was but at first that that was a big change because I was really I, I was really nervous about getting one because yeah. ha- having having a book with me it that's that's kind of, that's all bringing it everywhere I go bringing it everywhere I go that's that's my th- that's that's my comfort space like th- knowing knowing that I have it with me everywhere I go that's always been kind of like my my safe space and and sometimes I'll bring one everywhere everywhere I go but but then I'll ask my mom hey should I bring my book yeah I, I, I don't know if I, I don't know if I should leave it in the car bringing it in the restaurant because yeah. but but knowing that I have it with me like that that's that's like that's that's my sensory object like that that's some that's something that I know I if I'm having a hard time or if I just need to just compress and just to calm down I have my book with me I can read it and then I'm and I'm comfortable and and that, and that but but also it was a way for me to break away from break away from technology so so yes. had, so having a Kindle was so 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 I was thinking having a Kindle would mean it would just be another technology but then but then I actually you I actually used one for the first time, and it wasn't that way at all. And 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 I'm continuing to get one, but I but I bring a book everywhere I go, like yes, like right sure. now, like right now. I, <laughs> and I always have them with me. And even though I don't read it, I just having it with me. I I feel like I could be myself, and 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 if, especially if I'm having an anxiety attack, like at least I know I can I can sit down and know that my book there is with me. Yeah. Do you know the only other person I have known in my life who took a book with them everywhere was my mom. Really? And the thing about for my mom was she had a purse. And so her book was with, with her. She, yeah. she would take her book and her knitting with her or her crocheting. Uh, and my mother would knit and crochet and read a book at the same oh time. Gosh. She had a book holder. So uh, I always – there's something about when you're always there with a book that reminds me of my mom. And it's a very pleasant, oh, pleasant thing, right? I love that. But uh, – and I love that any time uh, that, you know, from time to time, we'll have little get-togethers at our house, and there'll be people there. And if I ever can't find you, I look and I find somebody is deep in conversation with you about books mm-hmm. and about what you're reading, and then they bring up a book and whatever. Yeah, I love but that. I see that that is a place of connection mm-hmm. for you with so it many is. people. Oh, yeah. So let's connect with the audience. Tell yeah. us about this, and, so, and are, are you loving it or are you not loving it? I uh, this is probably my favorite series ever. Okay. So I uh, so primarily I read sci-fi and fantasy, but like but but I read like the very like like high adult fantasy sci-fi, okay. and this is this is one I've been reading right now. It's called Demon and White. It's by Christopher Rocchio or Arakio. Um It's it's uh it's kind of like it's kind of like a mixture between Dune and Star Wars, and it's it's a it's um. It's it's six books. It's six books right now. It's six books, but it's kind of like it's kind of like this. Um, it's about this empire tyrant named Hadrian Marlowe, and he's and he's and he was this legend who was known f- who was known to like just to to destroy his son just to kill a whole race of aliens. And it, it, it's and this is kind of like he's in exile right now, but but it's him telling his story like like his whole life story throughout fifteen hundred years of his life. Wow. And it's one of the most riveting pieces of fiction I've, I've ever read, and wow. that's book three right now. And it's just it it, it 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 does have it does have a lot of action, but the best parts about it are the quiet moments and the moments. But when when he's just when he's just narrating and like when when he's talking about his life and and when he's commenting about himself when he was younger and like how he and how he blames himself for the mistakes that he made. But he's a, but I love him because he's such a flawed protagonist, and I, and I love I love flawed characters so much because if you were just to have a character that was perfect and did and did, and did great things all the time, it wouldn't be, it wouldn't it wouldn't be as interesting. But the one thing I love about Hadrian, the main character, is that even though even though he's been perceived to be kind of like Alexander the Great or or um, or Julius Caesar, he's he's still a human, and you and you're kind of you're seeing his whole life from his side, not not from not not from all the storybooks and not from all the legends, but like something that something that like is actually more intimate, and more personal. Like that's what makes these books so good. Is you're, you're seeing so many more deeper things with within his personality, and it's, especially things that, that that weren't covered in storybooks. So 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 it's almost so it's almost like so it's almost like seeing a space Alexander the Great go go throughout his life and see and see all the ups and downs. And it's just such a good series. My gosh, Kobe, I want you to start doing <laughs> book reviews. 
Like seriously. I love I mean, to. I love to. Yeah. When you sp speak so passionately about it, it makes me. Now I have a question about what you said in the beginning. You said he'll destroy a son. He does. Are we talking yeah. S U N or S O N? A son. Because so. so An S U N. Yeah. Like so, a big. Yeah. So ooh. the main. So the main series is called the Sun Eater, and it. And it. He, but what what happened was so 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 we know so we already know how it all ends. We know that he destroys a whole entire sun between bet, between this between this war um, wow. with with an alien race, and he and he ends up he, he he does these awful things, and and now and now he's and now he's in exile. Like now now he's like he's he's, he's on trial. So this is kind of like his this is these are like his last moments telling this whole story before he's wow. Powerful. Yeah, it's 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 intense, but it's one of those. It's like it's like better call. It's like better call Saul. Kind of like to, to where to where you see, to where you see him start off as who he is, and then yes. you, you see the downfall of his character as it goes I on. See. It's and it's a slow burn. It, it takes it it takes its time, and you do get you, you do get set pieces, and you do get really get really good moments here and there. But the best part about it is that you 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 see him get worse and worse and worse. It's a corruption story, like yeah. it. it and you see, you see this plucky young kid who, who wants to, who, who, who wants to have peace w with an alien race, go to that to being this this absolutely sociopathic empire tyrant who wants nothing, who, who wants nothing but to, but, to, but but to devote his life between between his family and his empire, wow. and, and and it's just it's one it's like it's like Dune where where. The one thing about it was that it was never about him. It, it was never about Paul being Paul being the hero. It was about it, it, it was about seeing him go from being this this very like this, this very awkward kid to, to just this absolutely insane um, messiah. And it, and it's it's such a phenomenal wow character arc. But wow. Uh, well, amazing. And so this uh, this is the third, yeah, and it's one of your favorites. The, yeah. If yeah. I were to ask you what is your favorite of all time book, I know it's just like Ooh, brutal, that's brutal a good to question. ask you that, right? It's like Sophie's Choice. And, and, I, and I'll, I'm not going to hold you to it. Like you can amend it later on. This doesn't have to be your forever be all end all, but just off the top of your head. And if you have to say three, what what if you were going to make a recommendation? To somebody and say, "Oh, this book! I love this book so much." So it depends because primarily I read I read fantasy and sci-fi, and like uh -huh. a, a, a lot of the stuff I read is not like somebody. It's not something that anybody could just read. But but there but but there are some books that I've read that I thought, "Oh yeah, this is this is incredibly important." And I think the one book that like the, the one the one like, or, or no the book series that like that got that got me into reading was Game of Thrones. Okay. And G Game of Thrones, I remember for the longest time I wanted to watch the show and I, I and I wasn't allowed to watch it because it's Game of Thrones. And I, and, <laughs> yeah. and it, it kind of, it kind of became a joke between my between me and my mom saying, "Oh, um I made a post years ago when I was 15 on Instagram and it, and it and and it, and it was um it it, it it was so silly. It it, it, it it was so dumb, but it was um it was I was saying I was saying, if I can climb to the top, I'm not going to kind of watch Game of Thrones, Mom. <laughs> and I just, I would make those kinds of jokes. Like, I would, I pretty much would, like, beg her to, to, to watch yeah. it. And then finally, when I was 16, I was, I asked, hey, I just, I, I asked my mom one time, hey, I just realized that um, Game of Thrones is ba are, are based on books. Are the books as bad as the show? And and then we and then we, and then we kind of made a deal, and we, and we and she said, okay, if you if you read all the, if you read all of the books, we we will watch the show. So and, how so you've seen the show now? Mm -hmm, how yes. old were you when you watched the show the first time? I was twenty, I think. And, but do you yeah. now understand why? She oh was, yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> like, no question. Even in the books, no. I was like, I was I was seventeen when I when, when I read them, and. I was so many moments like like the red wedding, the points the, the repoints in the story like that where I was like, oh, I see why I was not allowed to yeah. I, I was allowed to watch this. It makes a lot makes a lot of sense. Yeah. It, but that but but the reason why I love Game of Thrones so much was it was it was was even though you do have the fantasy elements, the best part about that whole series what, what were the characters and and the, the political intrigue. That that was always what made me so into that. Into that story and, and seeing and seeing like all these amazing, amazing characters like Jon Snow, T Tyrion, 
every single Lannister character in the series. Just so, like so many well, just just so many well-known iconic characters that that are so influential to, to, on the stories now. Oh my goodness! Yeah. Yes, it's changed the way people do everything. Now oh yeah, because it was so huge. I finally have seen it, but I but I didn't see it when it was first out. We didn't have yeah. HBO, and then we watched it as a family during the pandemic. And I don't know how you all waited. Years because we just, we would finish the season and we'd be like, all right, what time is it? We can do one episode of the next season. Yeah. And then I would think, oh my gosh, they had to wait two years. I wouldn't have imagine. Made it. I, I wouldn't can't... have made it. I couldn't have made it. So uh, you brought up Dune a couple of times. Yeah. What uh, what have you been seeing on television and in the movies and uh, that you liked or didn't like? Well, I well I actually did watch Dune Part Two re- recently. Yeah, which was let's just say it made me a fan. And yeah. and, that, and now I'm reading the book. Now, now I'm do now, now I'm like now 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 I have the whole series. Like I, like I, I really want to get into the series. Like I I am a fan now, and and I loved part one, but part two felt like the payoff that we were waiting for, and it was such a good movie. But it was but it was also one of the best theater experiences I've ever had. Really? And b- because we, we so we saw so we saw it in Dolby. We, we didn't see it in IMAX. We, we saw we saw it in Dolby because because of the sound. Yeah. And it was, we felt everything, every single sound, every single rumble, just everything, and and the and just everything on screen, the detail of it all, it was absolutely amazing. And that doesn't bother you sensory no, wise. It, I can't handle it. It probably wouldn't. It probably wouldn't if I if, if I were younger. But I, I I definitely I definitely say if you if you do if you if if it is a sensory thing, yeah. d- definitely wait till like it, it, it comes on streaming. But but if it doesn't, please see it in the theater because it is absolutely okay. an amazing experience. Okay. Yeah. Uh, and then anything else you've seen movie-wise, or, or should we move over to TV? Oh, no, actually, I re- – so so one of the funny things about me is I love John Hughes movies, but, but, I, never, okay. but, but I never, like, loved romance flicks. But recently I, I watched him – but but I've been but I've been watching all these movies with, with my mom. Like I watched when Harry Met Sally, which which was phenomenal, oh, which was phenomenal. Was it was yeah. so good, and I, I loved it so much. And uh, one night one night, I was just sitting with my mom, and, and she and she was like, "You want to put on a movie?" What? And, 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 and we were just like we, we were just scrolling through, through, through random ones, and she found ten things I hate about you uh, the, with Heath Ledger, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I just put it on. I'll watch it. I'll, I'll, I'll read while I listen to it." And it was one of the best movies I've ever seen. Like, I, 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 I absolutely loved it, and I didn't. Even, and after I finished it, I didn't even. I didn't even know it was based on a Shakespeare yeah. play on um, uh, um, Taming, uh, Taming of the Shrew. Yeah. I, I, I had no idea anything uh, of anything about that. So I, when I watched it, I just I loved it so much. And also, I never really grew up like with Heath Ledger because he yeah. he, he died he died around the time like he. he he died um, when I was six, so I never, so I never really like was in that. Uh, I, I was way too young to, to to really like watch anything he was in, but I never, I never was really around while while he was while while, while he was doing like the Dark Knight and while he was doing so many other things. So I never, I, I never really liked him, but I loved him so much in that movie, yeah. and it, it just everything about that movie was just it, 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 it was just. It's one of those movies where, where I can, where like I, I can watch it and like feel comfortable. Like it's that, it's that kind of thing. Yeah, and and it's now to look back and see he was so talented oh, he, then. He really what, was. what a waste. Yeah, what it, a waste. Would have it's loved a bummer. Seen what he would have done later on. Yeah, because so so talented. Uh, so I'm so happy that you like that. Yeah. Now, have you seen Clueless? Have you ever seen that movie? I never did. I need okay. to. Okay. Well, need Clueless to. is based on a Jane Austen. Oh, is it? It is. It's based on persuasion. Uh, so oh my goodness. I know, and it's one of those things that uh, people can go their whole lives and not necessarily know that. Uh, but there are lots of movies like that. They were very smart in the 80s that they started taking. Well, if you think about it, it's what Shakespeare did. Oh, yeah. Shakespeare didn't come up with all the plots to most of his plays. Yeah. They were based on stories that other people had told. So they just started rebooting them as these uh, rom- Do, doing rom-coms. Things. I love that. And, uh, yeah. yeah. So now you'll have to check out Clueless Definitely and see what you think of that. Because I'm a big Paul Rudd fan. I and love that. And to see Paul Rudd that young, um, but I'm glad that we still have Paul Rudd. And he looks the same. He really does, yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. Even, even Ryan Reynolds, 
one one movie me and my mom love is Just Friends, oh, it, yeah. and he, that 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 was one he was in. I, I don't remember any other actors, but but I, I know it was him. He looks just like he did back back yeah. back when he did that movie. But 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 there are so many actors that I, that I've seen that just haven't aged at all. Yeah, and, and it's it's just funny. Well, now I want to ask you, like, if uh, well, first of all, do you have a favorite of all time movie? I that's, know these that, are that's a hard questions. One. Uh, and then I want to know if, yeah. if there's like a favorite actor or a couple of your favorite actors Ooh. that you would watch any movie that they're in. So I have, so um, there isn't a specific movie that I absolutely like. It, it is my number one. There's there are so many movies that that I've loved watching, like like Star Wars, Back to the Future, um, Indiana Jones, like. Uh, all the blockbusters, but there's one. But there's one movie that I just love so much that I, that I can watch millions and millions of times, and it will never get old. And that is The Goonies. Interesting. Yeah, I've I, never seen that. Kobe. Oh my gosh! I've never seen it, so now I gotta watch it. It's it's just a fun adventure movie, and the chemistry be, 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 between the kids has always been like the best. But but it, but it's also like one. It's it's also just like one of the most quotable movies ever. But I know it's yeah. referenced all the time. Oh my goodness! Yeah. And I always go, well, I don't get it, and then everybody. In the room goes, oh, it's Goonies. You wouldn't, get, you know, but I gotta watch it's, it. At some it's, point. it's just fun, yeah. Okay. It's also a really good family film. Now, I, now I would say don't, don't let, don't let younger kids watch it because this was also during a time when, when PG wasn't really like PG. Oh. It, and it and good, good note. It, it's not, it's not bad. Bad. It's just like there are certain things like, like, like kids like who are six and under shouldn't, shouldn't really watch. But, um, no, it, it's a really good movie and it's something that it, it's a that. If we're, if we're talking about like nostalgic movies, like that, that's one that that, okay. I, would, that I always think of, and that's always the movie that I always say, "Oh yeah, the Goonies." That that is my that is the movie that I that I love so much. That's amazing. Well, now now I have to watch it with that review. Yeah. So now on to actors. Like, is there anybody that you're like, I'll watch? Like, I will watch anything that Tom Hanks is. In. Yeah, Tom, yeah Tom, Tom Hanks is a definitely a, a good choice. Re there isn't, a, there, there aren't really any specific actors that I love so much, but but recently I've been loving everything Paul Giamatti is in. Oh, I love, I love Paul. So I recently, so recently I watched um, the si Sideways, and that yeah. I, I love that movie so much. Yeah. And I and I wanted to see everything that he was in, and and then after that I watched his newest movie, The Holdovers, oh. which. That is another movie that is that is like in my all time favorites. That is a movie that like I want to have on Blu-ray. That that I want to watch a million times. Like and like never and like it, it will never get old for me. It, it will never lose its amazing amazingness. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I, I I love everything Paul Giamatti is in. But I I actually I, I actually didn't, I actually didn't realize this. Um, Hold, the Holdovers was 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 made by the same director who did. Um, sideways. So, so it was. Oh, um, yeah. I didn't know that either. I didn't realize. Yeah. That. Interesting. And I, I, I just I love that movie so much. And it, we watched it at, um, th Thanksgiving, and it it was such a good time to watch it too, yeah, because so because it, it it's in Christmas time in the early seventies. It's it's like it's up in New England, and it, it's all it's all snowy, and it's just it's it, it's 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 like a warm hug. Yeah, yeah, it really is. I love that movie too. Uh, okay, so I want to move because we're yeah, this is so much fun. But I want to move on to other things that you like yeah. and that you do. You uh, always with a book. There are lots of places that you love to go. I can think of a couple of of places that you love to go, and in particular, it is. Uh, I've been wanting lately to go to a high tea, and I hear that this is something that you enjoy. Yes. I've never done that. I've it never done it, Kobe. And I don't think I could eat a single thing at a high tea, but I you, get it, yeah. But you uh, talk a little bit about what you like about high tea and, and and different places you've been to have high tea. So for the longest time, I didn't really. I, I never when when I was younger, I didn't. I wasn't. I was. I did. I didn't really go to anything like high teas because I didn't know what I could have. And yeah. and usually my mom would call, but but when I was younger, there weren't a lot of options back then. Because what kind of yeah, diet? Because exactly. they don't know what yeah. kind of diet are you on. Yeah, yeah, just tea and like some, some, and like a thing of fruit, and, and that pretty much was like all, all, all I could have had originally. But because why though? Because you are, are you are you gluten and dairy? Yeah, food, right. Okay. And so and, and so many of them are like breads and and, and cheeses yeah. and, and desserts and everything, and that and usually like, and usually even if there's something I can have, they, they probably put like a glaze on it. That that that's cream or milk. So you never really know what what they have that that is available. So so for, so for the longest time, I never really. 
got to do got to uh, got to do high teas. Yeah. So I, but then um, but then but then there were a few that were amazing. Um, the first one I ever went to was in Disney World, and and it was the Grand Floridian. Um, Fl- um, Floridian. My mom had talked to the, um, to the chef before, and it was amazing. Like I had. My, my my mom cried actually because <laughs> because they ga- they gave me a whole thing of sandwiches scones like all, like all, uh, like all kinds of just amazing things that that was amazing and then I did another high tea in Toronto or, or, or no not Toronto on on Niagara on the lake it, oh, I love Niagara on the lake it's oh my gosh it's the best it is and at the end we stayed we stayed that they had a high tea and they were also amazing like the, so every time I've done it I've had a great experience but yeah. but I, I've only done it a handful of times but, re- but recently. So for the longest time, I've gone to the LA Arboretum, and that's that's always been summer. We've it's a great place. we've had memberships, and I, I love it. We, we go we go occasionally, and it's just like it's just a good place to, to just walk around. Like we're we're in nature. It's just really it's lovely. Recently, so last month, my mom is telling me, "Hey, we're going hey, we're going down to, uh, to the Huntington." I, I got membership, and I'm like, "What's the Huntington?" <laughs> uh, I've never heard of Huntington. it. Yeah. So. And so, that's how everybody in L.A. calls yeah, it. They call it the Huntington. The Huntington. Yeah. It's called the Huntington. Huntington. They, they'll say it without the The, the Huntington so. Library, yeah. yeah. It's, and I was like, what is a Huntington? And she was showing me, and she was sending me all this stuff, and I was like, oh, wow, this is actually really cool. But I, I, but I, I came to find out that it, that it actually was right was actually it was right by Arboretum, which I, which I had no idea about. I didn't realize that. I didn't even, I didn't even know it existed until like last month. So. We go, so we go, and, and she tells, and, and she tells me we're also we're also doing a high tea in in, in, in Huntington. Shannon, it was one of the best experiences I've ever had. Wow! I absolutely love, love the Huntington. It, it is like it is like a new safe space for me. But it's amazing because it because it has the Chinese gar- because it, it has the Japanese gardens. It, it has the Chinese gardens. It has wow. a tea house, and, and the and, and there were all these like, there were all these Roman statues all over, and it, it was just it was so beautiful, but. I loved it because I love the Arboretum, but I love Huntington even more because I felt safe there. Mm-hmm. It, 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 it's the kind of when you think of paradise, like 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 in your head, that's what I think of, like the Huntington, because it, because of just how serene and just how peaceful it felt, and how just it was huge. And, and even though there were people there, it wasn't it it it, it wasn't like a it, it it didn't feel public. It didn't and even though it was, it didn't feel public. It, it didn't feel like a it didn't feel touristy. It, it just, it was just this really, it was just, it was just this really nice location with with so much nature around me, and the the tea was phenomenal. Mm. Like that, that I think if I were to say like the best one I've had, it, it would be the one in the Huntington oh, wow. because they had, there, there were so many every single thing that they gave me every bite I'd be I'd be like, what is this? <laughs> like like I couldn't process it, and, and I'm like I don't know if I should like this. I don't, <laughs> I don't know if I. Should, it, it's good. Like I'm eating this, but like, can I have this? Like, right, right. It's an unfamiliar taste, maybe, yeah, and even a texture. Exactly. I love that because I never had things like that before. But they, but they had sandwiches. They they had um, they had they had white chocolate fondue. I could have. Wow. It, it, it was amazing. It was. It had no dairy in it. No dairy in it. That's pretty impressive. It, it was amazing. So, I I love the Huntington. I will. We have memberships there now. So. That so, so so that's also like somewhere I, I like I want to just bring a book and just like sit down and read because because that it, it's that it's that kind of place where like that's 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 like one of those many that's like one of those safe spaces you know you'll have if you want to, if you just want to get out of the house and just go somewhere. So. Well, and I love there's always a picture of you wherever you go sitting someplace mm-hmm. with, reading your book that you find a moment like my mom uh, that you find a moment to be there with your book. Uh, and you, I love yeah. the way you talk about food and appreciating food. You are this tall drink of water, <laughs> and you, you know, uh, you probably can eat whatever you want. Uh, but I know you to be somebody who really appreciates good food. Oh, yeah. And lucky for you, you have your mother who is like the best chef the best chef ever. Like, I, I, I keep trying to talk her into going on that next level chef because she's so good. And for those of you who don't know, um, Kobe's mom is Rachel Bird, who does the Let's Talk All the Things, all the things yeah. with me. Uh, we haven't done it in a little while, and we need to do it again because yeah, she's so much fun. And, and she's so talented in so many different directions. But she's so talented with food. She You can follow on Instagram. She has, I always get it wrong, Small Kitchen Big Flavor. Did I get it right? Yeah, you're right. Okay. Small Kitchen Big Flavor. 
And uh, I, I said to her the other day, I was scrolling through my Facebook, and sometimes the Instagram stuff, I don't really understand that because I'm a Luddite. Sometimes the Instagram stuff comes up on my Facebook, and I was scrolling, and I was like, what is the, it just came up this video that was just showing food, and I was like, what is this amazing thing, and who is making this, and it was your mom. And she was making, I don't know, it had eggplant, and it had insane amounts of, like wonderful. Oh yeah. Or maybe it was the one that she was doing with the butternut squash. Was soup. it? Was it recently? Very recently. She so and she. There were onions and things that had caramelized oh, on the pan. I think it. I think it was. Things. I think it. I think it was the focaccia bread she made recently. Oh well. That oh my gosh. True. That, that yeah, yeah. No. yeah. You got to look at small kitchen, big flavor, and you'll know exactly oh what we're talking about. So your mom's a really great cook, yeah. but I I hear you've been cooking some stuff. I have in. Not not fully yet because I, I'm still kind of like learning the ropes. But my mom, but my mom has been kind of like my mentor, and for the majority of the time, I'm I'm kind of like a sous chef. So 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 I help so I help a sister with everything. But recently, she's she's been walking me through certain recipes. Like usually usually we always do a banana bread or, or banana muffins. Uh -huh. And what um and uh, one day she 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 was help, she was walking me through on how to um. Uh, um, do, uh, Siri is, is responding to something that one of us said. Oh yeah, she wants to be. Oh well, yeah, she wants she wants to join the conversation too. She get, she, Siri's she, she, talking to me. She's getting FOMO. Yeah. Yes, exactly. Uh, but you were. I'm sorry, you were saying. Oh no, yeah, so, uh, yeah. So it um it was banana muffins, and she was and she and so so the one thing about it is that I've I've done I've helped her with it so much that when I so, that when she wanted me to, to the, when she wanted me to do it myself, I didn't even have. I didn't even need to ask her to about all the, about all the ingredients because I I got I got I got what I, I got what I remembered was on was was on the was on the recipe the and, and it was all and, and it was all in my head but but I didn't but I I didn't have to have her tell me like what to get because in my head like I was so used to getting it all so so I got so so I got them all done but she's but she still walked but she still walked me through it and and she's been doing that a lot more because she. Because she wants me to cook, and, and she wants me to know that, like, if there's something that, that I, if, if there's something that I love that she makes all the time, if I want to make it, I can because 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 I'll know because because I'll then know how to do it. So she, so she's been doing that a lot with me with like certain foods and just certain things, and, and it's been great. But yeah, no, it, it, but. I've been doing it so much more now, and it's not something that it's not it's not it's not something that like I want I want to take further. It, it's it's something I want it's something I want to do like more 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 personally, like more for kind of more for kind of like everyday. Sure. Everyday life. Yeah, but I mean, there being able to cook yourself something fabulous. I love it. Yeah, it's great. Uh, and your mom is like I can't imagine anybody being a better teacher. Good oh, no, she's amazing. She really and is. She's such. She's so good at it. But um, but yeah, being able to make what you want to make. Yeah. Is there anything that you're particular particularly like? Okay, next I want to make this. That's a good question. I'm not sure yet. I don't want to do so. Also, one of the hard things about cooking is that I have I have a very big fear of getting burnt. Like yeah. like going like like going like going near the stove, going near the oven. I, it's really hard for me. I can put stuff in the oven, but it's hard for me to take stuff out because I, because I just, I have such a big fear of getting burnt yeah. because I've gotten it. And like, especially, especially like with, with that, with me being on the spectrum, the pain is way more sense. The pain is way more there and, and it's way more extreme. Yeah. So when it's there, it's there. And like, it's, it's like right in my face. Yeah. So for the longest time, I, I really, I couldn't do it, but, but, but now it's gone to where like I can, I can make hard boiled eggs and not have to worry about being on the stove and like. I, I, there are so many things that I can do now that that I didn't do back then. So I'm getting there, and it's still really hard. But I but I love that like I'm actually pushing myself to do to do those kinds of things. And that's and there are so many things that like I wouldn't have done younger that I'm doing now. And that I think also go, going 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 near those kinds of things and and taking those kinds of risks have been amazing. But recently, I've been wanting to. Um, my mom makes. My mom is known for her famous Toronto cookies, and so for those. So for those of you who don't. So, so for those of you who don't know, for, for context, um, way back when we were way back when we were filming Lock and Key season two, I was craving. Randomly, I was craving peanut butter cookies, and like for some reason, it, it for some reason it just hit me, and I was like, Mom, I, I want I want peanut butter, butter cookies, but the batch she but but, but the batch but the batch she made. 
was it, it, we realized like how bland they were. So so my mom was like, okay, okay, I'm I'm, I'm gonna add some few things. I'm I'm gonna add a few things, and I'm not and gonna we say. Can't, yeah, we yeah, can't I, I, give away everything. I'm not this gonna is say a secret. If, this is a, this is a secret. So she added a few things, and they ended up being the best cookies she she, she she she's ever baked. And they have been dubbed the Toronto cookies, and 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 we made a whole batch of them one time for all the crew, for all the cast and crew. And and they're just it's like probably the best the recipe she's made. So. So I want. So I really, I really want her to teach me that recipe. That'd be cool. And and then, then yeah. keep, you know, because everybody wants to know. But I will say this: they're gluten free and dairy free cookies. But they are nut free. They are nut free because because okay. it is peanut butter. But they're gluten free and dairy free, and yet yeah. everyone loves them. Mm -hmm. Everyone, whether you are a gluten free person or not, I think that that's always like the echelon that like you can make something that's fabulous that's yeah. gluten free. But if it's fabulous and you're feeding it to people who aren't gluten free and they think it's fabulous, then you've you've yeah. gone to a whole other level. And the Toronto cookies are that. That that is like the biggest example when it comes to that. And the, and if you talk to people in the lock and key world, because your mom made them more than once for the lock yeah. and key people, and there are a lot of lock and key people that are, love the Toronto cookies. But that'd be lovely for you to learn how to make the Toronto cookies. Since we're talking about the acting piece, we've just have gone through this incredible time in Los Angeles. That uh, and I'm not talking about the pandemic, uh, right? Because that was an incredible no, time too. Incredible. Uh, but you were in Toronto for a lot of that. I was, yeah. Um, uh, working uh, because the film world found the way gloriously yeah. to continue on as safely as possible. Uh, there were lots of things that you guys had hoops you guys had to run run through. But then, yeah. but then we get through the pandemic and then we go through strike season. And I'm just curious for you because I think it was different for everyone. Yeah. Here you are, a young, talented actor, and um, you know there was a strike. And I'm just wondering what that what that experience was like for you. You know, Shannon, it didn't just affect me; it affected the whole industry. And I think it did affect me, but I think more so the industry. And even them before, there was such, there were so many issues happening with within everything. And I think it was expected, but it also but it also heightened things. And even after, we're still trying to pick up, pick back up from everything. And it, but it's changed so much, and like it's impacted everything so differently. And I, I, and even though it's over, there's still so many hurdles we have to go over just to get, yeah. just to get back to a stable space. But it's been, honestly, like when, it, what it all comes to is I, I just want to work. Yeah. That all I want to, like, I will do anything, commercials, guest starring, regular, it, it, it doesn't matter. I just want to work because that, because that is, because that is, that is my safe space and that is something I love to do. Yeah. And I, and I haven't done it in so long and it's, I'm not going to lie, it, it is tough, but, but also I know that I'm not, that I'm not stopping anytime soon. I, I'm still going. And even, and even, and, and even with all of those hurdles ha going on right now, that is not stopping me. I'm, I'm still going, I'm still I'm I'm still here, I'm still here talking to you, yeah. and that and that to me is the most important thing right now. So I'm not I ne I never let it get to me. And even though I do have days where, where I where I where I do struggle, and I, I I I always have days like that. And I and honestly, like the the only the only thing that comes to my mind is work right now, because because that that's always that that is always what I think about, and that is always something. This is this is my life I'm talking about, and and this is something that gives me joy that has made me who I am now, and I don't and that and that is something I don't want to get get rid of so suddenly because 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 it is still because it is still with me and, and it is still something that 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 make that 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 makes me feel comfortable and that makes me that that gives me actual joy, so I I don't want I I don't want to let things like the strike or or the slog, or, or the lack of saying, or the lack of doing things, get 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 in the way of my career. I'm still I'm still walking. I'm I'm still doing. I'm still I'm still living through life, and it's it's a lot. It, it, it is, but 
but I'm not gonna. I'm not giving up anytime soon. Well, I love that. I'm, I'm still here. And you do other things as well. I mean, one of the things that you do, you're a speaker. Yeah. And um, I love that you've you've got a, a speech coming up that you're doing at Pepperdine, where you're I am, a, yeah. you're a keynote speaker. If you guys have not heard Kobe be the keynote speaker, oh, oh my gosh, um, I. I got to go, it was such a treat, I got to go before the pandemic, it was like the year, the fall before the pandemic, I got to see you do the keynote speech at TACA, at their annual conference, and I am, there were people weeping, I stand it was I, I loved it, It yeah. was a pretty incredible day, I was so glad that I, I wasn't going to be able to make it, and then I just got in the car that morning, and I was like, I need to be there, I need to see this, and it, my goodness, it was so worthwhile, and uh, I'm so glad. And to see yeah. so many people line up just to get a moment to get a picture with you and talk to you after the speech, it was just so amazing, Kobe. He's a great speaker, you guys, and and oh, thank you. And yeah, he I does such a good job. And if that's something yeah. that you guys know, people that you want him to come and speak, um, def- definitely reach out because he's a, he's a great speaker. So you got that coming up at Pepperdine. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Uh, that's next week, and I'm excited to hear how that goes. Uh, wonderful. But I guess, and we're running low on time. But I wanted to talk a little bit about is it a is it a hard thing? I mean, here you are, you're a young man, and you're an actor. And I mentioned before, though, that you've made inroads in the entertainment world and really, you know, in a very real way, uh, for some people, you are the face of autism. And is that a a huge responsibility for you? How do you handle that? I don't really like to see myself as the face of autism. From the – I'm trying to find the right words. Let me think. Um, No, so – I've never, I've never seen, I, I've never, I, I don't like to see myself as like the face of autism because there are so many other people with different journeys, and I've, and I'm just, I'm just, I'm just sharing my voice, and I'm, I'm, I'm telling people like what, what my life, what, what my life is like living with autism, and, but, but also the reason why I advocate so much, and the reason why, why I, why, 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 why I want to share my voice, is because I want, I want people to know that, that, that with that, that whether you have autism or not, you. Don't let, don't let people bring you down. When, don't, don't stop following your dreams because that. Don't let don't don't stop people following your dreams. Don't. If there's if there if there's some if there's something you want to do in life, follow it. Keep going, and I'm, I want, I'm trying to find the right. Sorry. I'm trying to find the right way You're to. Um, great. I'm trying. The reason why I'm spreading my voice out so much is because I want people to know that they can follow their dreams. I want them to know that that no, that that nothing can stop them. It, it, if there is something that gives you joy, if if there if there is something you, you know you want to do, do not stop following it. And and yes, our journeys are so different. But but also the thing is, is that my journey is so different, and I'm not and. I even, I, 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 I even was speaking about this with my keynote, and, and I was saying this isn't these aren't just set ways of doing things. This is my this is my journey. I'm not I'm not telling you how to how to go about with your life. This is just my journey, and I'm and I'm just I'm just sharing what what I've been through, and 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 hopefully and hopefully and hopefully you can take something out of that. But but I want but I want you to know that like at least at least know that 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 that. That you do that there are 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 opportunities. You, you, you can't you can't do things, and it's not. And and there always and there always will be struggles, but that but that isn't gonna but but that isn't gonna stop anything. Don't don't let that don't let that stop you. So so I so in, in a lot of ways. I really am glad that 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 there that there are people who have been inspired by my words and by and, and by what by what I've been doing because that, that that's all that's all I've ever wanted from from the beginning. So I, I really hope that 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 there are people who 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 look at me and say, if you can do it, I, if you can do it, I can do it, and that and that and that can be their inspiration. And there and there are so many other people like that. I'm I'm not the only one doing it, but also but but. But I, but I want people to know that, that there are voices out there yeah. that, 
that that do that 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 do hear you and that do listen to you. And, and I, I really hope that I can get it out even more. Well, I know I'm one of the people who's been inspired by you. Um, I remember when you were like 15 years old and you sat in the studio with me and I said to you, you know, what are you, you know, what do you want to do? And you said, I'm an actor. Mm -hmm. And you said, and I want to be a working actor. Mm -hmm. And, and I remember being like, oh, that's so cute. You know, here's this 15-year-old, yeah. and he has no earthly idea what's involved with being a working actor, you know. And then, you know, you just went and did it. Mm -hmm. You just yeah. went and did it. And I've watched you time and time again. Your work ethic is incredible. You, um, I, you know, I've seen you, and, and yeah. you, you rise to the occasion, and you are a consummate professional. We've, I've taken you on the red carpet, you know. There was, I can remember a time when we so were on the red carpet. So many times. Oh, my gosh. And, it's and it's crazy, it's, yeah. It's, and it gets, it's nuts. It gets nuts. And, you know, you think you're going to be asking, you're going to be talking to this person, and you're going to be asking them these questions, and then that's not the person who comes walking up on the red carpet. And I've watched you have grace in so many circumstances where I, I just, it's amazing. Quite frankly, I'm, yeah. I'm absolutely amazing, and I've been inspired by you, and um, and and I know so many other people who have as well. So, thank you. Of course, and that and that also is why I spread my voice too, because I, I I want people I want people to know that everyone can work, every 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 everyone can do something. Just because my brain is works differently, and look and look, all our brains work work differently. But yep. I think even more so with autism. Even though there are, even though there are still differences, we're still people. We're, we we still have feelings. We still have lives. We still have dreams. We still want to do things, and that's that's always that's always why I say profession first because that's what because that's what I've been doing from the beginning. And my autism is, and my autism isn't stopping me from doing that, but also it's helping me and it's and it's it's the reason why I am why I am where I am today. So 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 that so that's so so that so that's why I want people to. To hear us and see us and, and know that we can, we we can we can work. We are capable. Hear us, hear us, see us, be aware of us. Yes, yeah. Amen. Well, it's just an overwhelming pleasure to know you. You're just Likewise. such a wonderful. Uh, and and I'm glad that we got to take this time so people could get to know you, right? Um, yeah. Um, because I think. One of the things that you have, and I say this to your mom all the time, there's something extra that's sparkly, wonderful, and beyond about you. That um, I remember many, many moons ago, we, we were doing a, a crazy telethon uh, that we were raising money for autism care today, and we were doing that with Corey Feldman and his wife, and, and it was beyond the scope of yes. what was reality, right? And, um, but you were mm -hmm. singing and I was standing there in the room where you were singing and Corey Feldman was going to have to step in after you were done singing and say something. And he and I were standing looking at the monitor together and he was like, this kid's amazing. <laughs> and I was like, I know, right? There's something translucent about you. Okay. It's that, it is that star quality that, you know, when you put you can be sitting and talking, and sometimes, you know, and, and you exude this personally, too, but there is also something, when you put a camera on something, somebody and something extra happens, you have that je ne sais quoi, that thing that happens and you transform in front of the camera that is, and you, just an earnestness about you that shines through um, that's absolutely amazing. And people see that and recognize that, and I, uh, I see that, I recognize that. It's just, but then getting to know you as a person, and that you're just a kind, sweet, intelligent, amazing, caring, empathetic young man. And I'm thank glad you. that um, people got to see how brilliant you are. Well, thank you so much. I, 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 I see this so many times, but I really. I really do love coming up here and, and talking with you because because every every time it's so fun. But, but also but also like that's but when you say things like that about about my earnestness and I think it's I think it's always and with uh, with with Autism Awareness Month co coming close. I think one of the most important things is that it's not just it's not just about awareness too. It's about authenticity. And the thing is is that I all from the moment 
I started this. I've always wanted to be myself. And yes, there, there are. And yes, I do mask. And yes, I, I do all. The, I do. I do. I do do all those things. And my, and my and my mom has told me you don't have to mask. But and and I I told her mom I can't function if I don't mask. Like if 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 I if I don't if I don't mask I cannot be it. I cannot be myself. And it, it help it helps me. But also. I, but also, I want people to know that yeah, I, I do I do have I do ha- I do have really bad days, and I and I do struggle, and it, 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 it's with everything. But but it, it's with everyone. But I don't want people to know that my life is just pitch perfect every single day. I I have days where I just where it's like I have a million tabs in in my head, and and I and I can't go and I can't go to them one by one because there's one at the far edge that that suddenly t- t- takes interest, and next thing I know, I'm on that side, and then. And then, and I'm going, and then I'm going back the other way. So, and I just have days where, like, I can't even speak. I, I, I can't, I can't talk. I, I, I can't look at anybody. I can't even like look at somebody in the eye because my brain is just on off mode, and I just want to be in my bed all day and just do nothing. And but, but I want people to know that yeah, yeah, I have autism, and yes, I, I do have those issues. But, but I'm still a human, and I'm still going through the through the thing, through, through. Through everything that, that that anybody else would, and that's and that's and that's why that's why that's why I think authenticity is so important. Because even though even though I am acting, I still am a human, and I'm, and I'm still going, and I, and, I, and I still go through everything that every that everybody that everyone else does. It, 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 and and I will say, and I and, and I'm saying that with everybody else too, because I. I know that there are so many people who look, who look up to me, and 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 I, and I want them to know that. I'm not that. I'm not this. I'm not this perfect human being. I'm not. I have flaws. I. I. I, I am not perfect. But. But I don't. But I don't need to be perfect. I just. I just need to be me. And that's. That. That's always been the most important. Part of. Part of all of this. That's a huge message for people. Yeah. And we love who you are. Thank we don't you. need you to change a thing. Because uh, you. you're amazing. And that's all the time we have. Which is I, I'm leaking. Um, because you made me cry. Um, because you're amazing. So thank you. I just absolutely so glad to be here with you. Uh, but that is all the time that we have for today. And I have to give you a little bit of idea of, uh, as you're watching the next few days, who great guests tomorrow on tomorrow's show, we have Julie Matthews, who is an amazing nutritionist. And she, Ooh. along uh, with Jim, uh, Jim Adams has, uh, they've done a study on all like the 13 most common, uh, diets that people use with autism and segments it off like which which ones are helpful in reducing anxiety which ones are helpful in reducing seizures which ones wow. are helpful to promote language it, you're just not going to want to miss this julie matthews that's amazing wow. from nourishing hope will be here tomorrow then on monday uh sarah bradford who goes by sj childs she's a children's author but also it has started her own podcast network i she is a force. Uh, she's an amazing mom. She had one of her children diagnosed on the autism spectrum. And then as they started asking questions and finding out, now she and both of her children and her husband have all gotten diagnoses. Uh, and so she is an amazing, you're going to want to hear about her podcast and her podcast network. Uh, so there is, as, as Sarah Bradford is her real name, but she also goes by S.J. Childs, and that's the name of her podcast. Then on Tuesday, we have Dr. Graham Pichet is going to be back with us. And the topic that we're going to be talking on is about bedtime rituals, mm. about like what's the hard part of getting your kiddo to sleep or for you personally staying asleep. We're going to talk about all I that. Then on Wednesday, uh, Amanda Ralston is going to be with us. And if you have not heard of Amanda Ralston uh, talk, she is the owner of a pretty amazing company called Non-Binary Solutions. She identifies as being neurodiverse, and she is a hoot. I want to say to everybody, if you can, you should follow her on Facebook. One of my favorite things every day, she posts like seven memes a day that put me (laughs) on the floor on the floor, but she's also a brilliant professional in the field of autism treatment, uh, changing, revolutionizing everything. Amanda Ralston on Wednesday. Then on Thursday, we have uh, two gentlemen from Florida who have started an organization called Hurdle that is there to help individuals on the spectrum to achieve things that are important to them. You're not going to want to miss that. And then on Friday, 
Katie Gibney is going to be here with us. She is an expert in helping adults on the autism spectrum. So we will be here with her, and she'll talk about some of the things that she has uh, that are able to help support adults and help them, because it's so individual for adults, right? Yeah. I mean, it's individual across everything, right? But uh, especially when you get into an adulthood, you know, what one person needs for support is the complete and total polar opposite what a, another person needs. So Katie's going to help us to figure out some of that stuff. So that's the next week. We hope that I, I've been collecting A words for the for, a, love, for yeah. uh, April. And um, so what was the A word that you just used? Do you remember? Because now it, now it's like flipped from my mind. Uh, but uh, we've been saying authenticity. 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 Yeah. We've been saying awareness, appreciation, action. Uh, acceptance, but authenticity. Yeah, I'm authenticity. Now, so now, uh, for uh, it's April, the A uh, month. The A month. Uh, I love it. Right? I love it. Love it. Authenticity. Right. There's the other word that I needed to have there. We're going to add that uh, to our list. So join us for this A month, and right. we're just going to keep on keeping on. Until then, and thank you for being here. Absolutely. Love you. Love you. Uh, but we'll be back with you tomorrow. Until then, give your kiddos a hug from me and one for you, too. Bye-bye Bye. for now. If you found anything helpful in this video, please give us a like. In fact, make sure that you smash that subscribe button on YouTube and give us a like on Facebook. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Instagram for important updates. And please download our free podcast wherever you get your podcasts. Thank you so much. See you next time.